everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club and another volume of my essential film reviews collection. Thanks for being there. The clocks stopped at 1.17. Based on the world-renowned novel of the same name by Cormac McCarthy and with a screenplay from Joe Penhall, this was the first Hillcote film not penned either by himself or Nick Cave. John Hillcote also followed up one classic film with another and this audience splitting classic. Too maudlin for some, downright depressing for others, or an uplifting and heartwarming tale of the human spirit. Pick your poison. With a cast of only 16 credited roles and a further 10 uncredited, this near two hour film follows the journey of one man and his son across a post-apocalypse United States of America. From a richly coloured beginning of an idyllic life, we are immediately transported to a monochrome, desaturated world of despair and destruction. With a melancholic narration from man, Vigo Mortensen, it's clearly established the earth is dying and quickly, and with a continuing narration we see and hear the destruction unfold as earthquakes shake the earth amid thunderclaps and lightning strikes. Sheltering with Boy, Cody Smith McPhee and Sleeping Rough, the brightly coloured beginning has been completely taken over by a dank, dark and dirty environment. Existing only on scraps of food, both man and boy push a shopping trolley full of their last remaining deeply personal belongings through a bleak wide open and seemingly destroyed world. The director immediately deserves special praise for bringing both the book and the dying earth to the screen so magnificently. In fact, with so few characters in the film, this becomes another character in itself. Deforested woods, trees dying, vacant streets filled with destruction, it is a true marvel and an incredible feat of achievement from both Hillcote and his Spanish director of photography. Following the trek south to the coast where they hope they will find solace, escape and redemption, man and boy are often framed against town after town of bleak nothingness, desolate and empty spaces. There was very little, if any, CGI used throughout, enhancing the credit due to both director and director of photography. Throughout the film it's also interesting to note how often a shot is used of only the hands and feet, or an extreme close-up of the face, as if to reinforce the decay that surrounds them. One particular early scene encapsulates this, as with a reverse zoom, the director frames just a boy clutching his teddy bear, as he realises there are several pairs of feet dangling above him. Not in a gratuitous way, more matter-of-fact with the man later commenting on a similar scenario that's nothing you haven't seen before. One other interesting feature to note is again the juxtaposition between a vibrant colour, particularly red, and the grey, desaturated world they now live in. The red is often shown in a burning candle flame or raging fires, and equally so when we flash back to the past. Depending on the mood of the man, the flashback is either in full colour, joyous mood, to grey and dark to match his present day mood. These flashbacks are often brief, and while the man is sleeping or dreaming, this is our main introduction to woman, Charlize Theron. With a small supporting and cameo cast, old man Robert Duval and veteran Guy Pearce excellently standing out. The two central characters of Man and Boy are the film's heartbeat. Cody Smith McPhee as Boy almost eclipses his veteran acting partner. It's a still performance, deliberately and purposely so, as is the way he grows into the second and third acts to become the film's moral centre. He was rightly lauded for his performance, which was so mature for an actor so young. His performance at times is heartbreaking. Figo Mortensen, another in my collection of favourite actors, is sublime here. He injects so much love and a burning protection for his son, of tremendous pride, yet it's the simple touches and glances that seal the performance. 
With so many close-ups of Mortensen in particular, he has to be on top of his game. He is, and his portrayal is simply stunning. Backed by a beautiful musical score from Nick Cave and Warren Ellis, this film moves me every time. It plays with the emotions to dramatic effect, with juxtapositions again between love and despair, hope and hopelessness, good versus evil. You have to keep carrying the fire to the bleakness of the difference between life and death. It's a truly wonderful film, a well-adapted story, and a damn good reason to keep those that you love close to you. And that was The Road, directed by John Hillcoat. A personal story for you. I first watched this on the first week of release at a local cinema. I took along the love of my life for a date night for a post-apocalypse film. Hooray! Now, spoilers aside, there's a scene, six, seven minutes from the very end of the film, that just breaks me. Breaks me in the same fashion that, hey dad, you want to have a catch? At the end of Field of Dreams, breaks me. That's how much it breaks me. <laughs> oh, blimey. That particular short scene, I experienced myself. Um, and it brings back so many memories. And it breaks me. But the film, aside from that personal anecdote, is unbelievable. And I highly recommend it to you. And I'll leave you in peace. And in solidarity. Thanks very much for watching. Please be careful out there. I hope the world is spinning in your direction, in your corner of the world. Peace everyone.